What is up, DMV basketball fans? Welcome to another Believe in DMV Hoops. Got a great one here for you today. If you're an American basketball fan or a Maryland basketball fan, you're going to get something out of this one. We've got Americans head coach Dwayne Simpkins joining me. Uh, coach Simpkins, thanks for coming on, and uh, how are things going? Thanks for having me, Matt. Everything's going well, man. Just, uh, you know, our guys are back on campus from spring break uh, about a week and a half ago, and uh, a number of guys are still healing up from uh, injuries and everything, but we're getting back in the weight room. Haven't done anything on the court just yet. Uh, we'll we'll do that next week sometime and slowly build up, but uh, everything's going well. You get a full off season really with some of these guys to, to work together. And I mean, obviously you'll have some changes to the roster next year, but at least uh, you're going to have a core group of guys back. So is that just exciting to have like this full extra amount of time to get started early with guys and, and get prepped for next year? Yeah, it is. Um, especially in this day and age, man, of, um, transfer portal and uh, the uncertainty of, of your roster to go into my second year and be able to have some um, some semblance of what we're going to do and, you know, uh, knowing who's coming back. And then also as important as those guys having an idea of, of how we do things. You know, I think last year you know, we were fortunate enough to have a uh, international trip. We went to Italy, so we got a chance to have, you know, 10 practices. I think we use about eight of them. Uh, but nonetheless, it was good to kind of get a crash course um, into to, to how we do things. But I think now we can be more deliberate. We can be more intentional. Um, and for us, you know, in particular on the defensive end, um, I think we skipped some steps uh, that if I could go back and do again, I probably would have done differently. But this will give us uh, an opportunity to to address those things and, and really build a solid foundation. Just on that Italy trip real quick, I know you get the one trip every kind of rolling four years. Was that an intentional choice to use that in your first year to, to kind of get those extra days up front? Yeah, it was, you know, kind of happened by by chance. Honestly, um, they had already been planning on potentially doing it um, gotcha. before I got the job. And when I did get it, you know, they kind of went full steam ahead with it. So uh, that was that was kind of how it all came about. Gotcha. All right. Well, before we get too in, uh, far into this, let's get our ad reads out of the way. We're brought to you by Stateside Vodka and their Surfside Hard Iced Teas, Hard Lemonades. They're all delicious. And Bet Online. Bet Online's your number one source for all your betting needs. You can get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, UFC, golf, tennis, everything you can think of. It's the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available right from your phone. Head to the website or use uh, your mobile device to use our promo code Believe B L E A V for fifty percent off welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, coach, maybe just let's back it up here a little bit. Just from your perspective, how'd your first season go? How do you feel about things overall? Uh, I, I thought it was I thought it was pretty solid. You know, if I could give it a grade, I would say maybe a B. Okay. Um, you know, I thought that we we got a chance to really lay the foundation on, you know, everyone talks about, um, you know, X's and O's and everything. But I think what's as important is how you do things, um, mm -hmm. you know, really establishing your culture. And everybody talks about that a lot. But. It means a lot to me. Um, I've been a part of a number of winning programs as a as a player and a coach. And, you know, there's nothing more important than than your culture. Um, you know, we, we we got a chance to to change some things. You know, I, I wasn't here, obviously, before, um, but I'd done enough homework and talked to enough people to get an idea of, you know, day to day, how things were done, um, good, bad, anything in between. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, my biggest thing coming into it was was trying to make sure that things were done the way that uh, we want to do them, you know, day in, day out, everything from, um, you know, meetings as a staff, meeting as a team, film, uh, practice, uh, weightlifting, all of those things. And, um, you know, I, th I thought we did a pretty solid job this year. And my first time being a head coach in college, um, you know, it was a crash course for me. And I got a chance to, to make mistakes and, and, kind of, um, you know, address some of those things during the season, a number of things that, uh, you know, we're going to going to address in the off season so that we can take the next step. So overall, I thought it was a, a pretty positive experience for us this year. You guys were just close against a lot of good teams. And there were a lot of games where, you know, it was a possession here or there late in the game. And uh, I would say, maybe you'll back me up on this. You guys were maybe not as consistent defensively as everybody probably would have liked. Well, that's or... an understatement, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> trying to put it in a positive so nice you, though. yeah i mean it's um i i watched a lot of your games i saw some really good things defensively uh but you guys definitely you had a different system defensively than the previous uh coaching staff year too so i'm sure it was probably 
a lot for these guys to learn in a short amount of time here. And and I think those are the kinds of things that show up at the end of games when people are, you're trying to put a lot of stuff in quickly here too. Is, is that a reasonable take? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, I thought we, from an offensive standpoint, I think we did a lot of things really good. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were as high as like 110 and 112 in offensive defensive um, uh, on, on the offensive side of the ball. Um, you know, we, we broke the record for the most three pointers made um, in a season in school history. Uh, we shot 35, 35 and a half percent from three. Um, our two point field goal percentage efficiency was was top 60 in the country. Um, and, and our turnover rate would it dropped precipitously from from last year's team. Uh, so we did a much better job in that area. Um, I thought that we had the ability to score the ball pretty well, uh, both inside and out, uh, mm-hmm. which we did. Um, but again, the defensive side of the ball was where, um, you know, it cost us, you know, and we, we pretty much we had two, you know, we had almost had two seasons within a season. Um, you know, we we were first in, in the Patriot League and scoring at one point at 73 and a half a game, you know, playing the way that I, I wanted to play, um, mm-hmm. pushing tempo, trying to score in the first seven first seven seconds after a mate after a missed field goal uh, or still. And I thought we did a really good job with that. Um, now, on the defensive side of the ball, you know, the second half of the season when we had so many injuries, I mean, we had tough, yeah. total, we had 107, 107 games missed by by, by um, our scholarship players, which is a lot. Mm-hmm. And it caused us to, you know, have to run more sets, not push in, in transition nearly as much, not not full court press as much as we were before. And, um, you know, we went from scoring 73 and a half points a game to about 57. Um, mm-hmm. for the latter half of the year. So, um, but on the flip side, we were better defensively. Uh, we were holding teams around 56 to 57 points per game. Uh, so somewhere we, we got to be able to marry those I two guess. once we are at our full complement of players. And um, and I think we'll be able to get that done. It's going to take a lot of intentional work. It's going to take a lot of sacrifice um, from our guys uh, because the intention is, or the expectation is, is that, we're going to get better on the defensive side of the ball, but also increase our efficiency on offense as well. Uh, you get three guys back from from last year's team, three key contributors uh, in in Matt, Lincoln, and Colin. What does that do for you going into this year, knowing that three of those core guys are, are definitively coming back for fifth you know fifth year? It's good to be old in college basketball right now, and they kind of help you guys do that. So, so what does that mean to? help you be able to install more, you know, stuff on top of what you worked on last year? Yeah, that's going to help out immensely. Um, you know, first from, you know, their leadership, you know, from, you know, we've got two freshmen, maybe three coming in. We're, we're, we're probably we're in the process of uh, recruiting a couple guys. One of them is a high school player. But uh, to, to be able to have those guys who have been in college now for four years, have been with me and our staff for one year, um, to be able to introduce those guys into what we do and have someone who has been here or three guys who have been here for as long as they have been is, is invaluable. Um, you know, that was a big priority for us to make sure that if those guys did want to pursue another year of college basketball, that it would be here in American. And, you know, we're blessed to have those guys to say that they want to, they want to finish this thing here. So um, that within itself, man, is going to be a huge win for us. Um, it's going to allow for us to, like you say, build on what we have done. Um, those guys know the expectation. They know how we want to get things done. And my expectation from them uh, is to, you know, make sure that the new guys that are coming in, uh, you know, they're they're in lockstep with what we do. I want those freshmen to walk through the door and look to their left and right, which is what freshmen do, and say, all right, how are we doing things? They, they're not going to say it verbally, but they are looking to see mm-hmm. how things are done. And, uh, when you do have uh, high character guys who are good players who have been productive in college and in particular here at American, that's going to it's going to really bode well for uh, for those guys' growth and development uh, early as early as possible. I think it sets a good precedent for guys outside of basketball too. That hey, this American education really means something, and guys yeah. are valuing that to come back and whether they start grad school or you know work on the next part of their degree or whatever that might be. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure there's some some limitations for you guys from a admittance standpoint, just being a, a good academic school. But there's a really positive flip side of that, too, is that's a yeah. valuable degree at the end of the day, too. No, a- absolutely. And that, and that within itself is what led us to be in the conversation to having those guys come back and having those guys, those guys entertaining coming back. 
uh, to play their extra year here at American. Um, all those guys are business school majors. Uh, our Kogod School of Business is one of the best in the country. Um, our the dean of our business school, his name is David Marchick, is um, you know well connected. Yeah, and a big time basketball. He's a basketball junkie, and you know for him to be in our corner and to have on hand, you know, uh, like really, really hands on relationships with. Uh, our basketball program, those guys really bought into the benefit of, you know, the 40 year plan, you know, the relationships and connections that those guys will make beyond basketball is going to bode well for them much later and much more important uh, in, in in life. So uh, they got that. Um, and, and and that's my intention is to, to recruit guys to this program who who are true student athletes who value the education of uh, of an American university degree. And, and trying to play basketball at the absolute highest level. Um, so it's not about, um, fortunately, so far anyway, you know, NIL, you know, we didn't lose anybody because someone got offered 20 grand to go here or whatever, you know, you got to try to put it all in perspective. I mean, and, and this is what I, I told our guys, they want to play professionally. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I've been there before. Like you, you can, the thing that you want to do is try to have it where your foundation for your very first job is a solid foundation. Um, yes, you know, Matt, Matt, uh, Matt Rogers very well could have gone to whatever school, pick it in the CAA, A10 or what have you, you know, would his productivity have been the same so that his first, his first job yeah. professionally in Europe is, you know, a division two team in, you know, whatever, Belgium or a division one team in France, you know, your first contract can set the, set the stage for, how soon you get to maximizing your true earning potential. And I, I think that those guys were, were smart enough to realize that. You mentioned you played overseas. You played in China, Italy, the Dominican Republic, France, Belgium. Does that help? Like having that experience, does that help you advise those guys and give you some credibility with them on, hey, trust me, I, I know how the system works. I still know people over there. Like, is that um, something you can kind of like, you know, advise them on essentially? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and when I when I played over there, it was a different day and age, but a lot of things are still the same from the standpoint of, you know, those GMs and teams, they want they want guys who uh, who have a resume. Right. You mm -hmm. know, uh, again, going back to Matt Rogers, Matt Rogers is going to be able to uh, put on his resume uh, coming out of college that he was a, you know, second team all A-10 player as a junior, first team all A-10 as a uh, I'm sorry, uh, all Patriot League as a senior. And, you know, who knows what's going to happen next year. I'm assuming it's going to be a lot of the same. And he's going to put himself in a position to have a, a much better job the first year out. I can talk to him and I have talking about my testimony of, you know, playing for solid teams uh, and, and, and also avoiding some of the teams that may have, quote unquote, sure. offered more money. Yeah. But if you do your homework, those programs and those teams, they don't they don't they don't follow through and pay. You know, it, it happens a lot. It happened to me a couple of times. It's happened to a number of guys that I play with in Europe where they say you're going to get 200 grand. Well, you you got 100 of it. And now they're saying, hey, the team's folding, you know. Uh, so I'm able to share those experiences and those testimonies. And and I think it's a benefit when I do talk from experience. And there's a lot of guys in there waiting for those checks to clear from, uh, you know, 10 years ago sometimes for some of these like Greek leagues and things uh, like that. I'm, too, I'm waiting to go back to Milan, Italy. Those guys owe me. Uh, <laughs> they owe me some money. So. Next uh, next Italy trip here in a couple of years. Maybe you can <laughs> knock on some yeah. doors there. Uh, those three guys we mentioned and, and a couple other guys in the program here too are, are all DMV guys. You're a DMV guy. This is a DMV podcast. So just, is that something that you want to build as like the foundation of this program is, hey, we, we've got a lot of local talent here and these guys do things a certain way and that's something you can kind of relate to and resonate with as somebody who you know came from this area too. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm biased. You know, I'm sure you are, too. Uh, I think we have the best basketball, high school basketball in in all the country. Um, mm -hmm. We have very good AAU programs who have very good coaches. We have very good high school programs that have very good coaching. And it's not just the WCAC there. You know, some of the charter schools are really good. D.C. public schools, Maryland public schools, Montgomery County, PG County, Charles County. You know, you can go on and on and on. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to I truly value the, the the competitive spirit of the, the players that come from the DMV. But what I won't do is is say that we're going to bypass other good players that may be from other areas that when you really do your homework, you realize that they have a competitive um, 
competitive fire and, and fiber that we're looking for. The high character guys, they fit fit who we are and what we do. Um, and the good thing about being from the DMV, man, is like, yes, I, I do want to recruit uh, the, the area. Uh, but I'm also, I've got enough resources and connections and really and relationships with people where, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to find out what the real is. You know, I can't tell you how many guys that, um, you know, I was recruiting this year and come to find out, you know, those guys, their intention is, Hey, I want to go somewhere. I'm not being highly recruited at a high level, but my intention is to go somewhere for a year or two and build my resume up so that I can go to a higher level. Well, I'm out. <laughs> you know what I mean? So if there are more players that are like that and, you know, a kid from South Carolina, uh, a kid from from Michigan, you know, that that we've got coming in this year, if they really buy into it. I'm going to go recruit those guys. So, you know, there's going to be a DMV recruitment up until a point. Um, again, our, our program and what we're about is more important than individuals. It's more important about more important than where those guys are coming from and what leagues they're, they're coming from. You know, we, we got to win ball games. Yeah, they got to know. That's got to pass the sniff test here, because uh, because somebody uh, you you know you know they know, and it just um, it's too connected around here to, to get away with gonna you know. Yeah, I, I I was I was faced with the same thing when I was at uh, I got the job at at Sitwell Friends and and even St Albans. You know, I can't tell you there were a couple of times where I recruited kids, and you know uh, the intention was for them to come in, reclassify, get an extra year, and seventh or eighth grade and then ninth grade try to go to WCAC school you know I, I was out <laughs> it, it's yeah. the same thing here and you know there are enough good players there are enough good players that you can have a uh, you feel a very competitive program a uh, team and program and, and that's what we're going to do talked about Matt Rogers here a little bit I obviously got to see Matt play a good amount the year before and it just seemed like you kind of really got what he could bring to the table and empowered him to you know, step out, shoot a little bit more. He got to create a little bit more. You ran some offense, uh, you know, through him in the high post and things like that. Was that just sort of, and that doesn't, that applies to other guys too, you know, Lincoln, like it just seemed like the the guys you had, you kind of understood how to get the most out of them and show off some things in their game that, that maybe they didn't get the chance to previously. Was that sort of a, a focal point coming in is, hey, let's really understand what these guys bring to the table and then help them maximize what they can do for the team here. Yeah, I mean that's 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 the job of a coach, right? Is um, or, or CEO. You you've got to you got to get the right people on the bus and get them in the right seats. Um, you got to realize what things they bring to the table that are of value. Um, when I was in the process of getting this job last year, applying for it, I watched a lot of film, and you know, the more and more I watched, you know, Matt in particular, I, I saw certain things in his game. I'm like, just not. It, it didn't highlight what he could do. Um, you know, last year he shot you know, 36% from three, but the only problem was he only shot 45 of them, you know? So when I got the job, I told him, say, Hey, you know, my vision for you, for our, for our team, for our success is that, you know, you, you got to shoot close to 150 of these things, man. So in the off season, we, we spent a ton of time shooting, getting the shots that we will get in our system, in our offense, picking and popping and getting proper footwork and balance and everything. And we repped it, we repped it, we repped it. And, 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 you know, I, I told him, I said, look, there are going to be some times if you, if you pass up on a three, I'm probably going to take you out. Yeah. Like if you get a, if you catch the basketball and your defender's feet are inside a three point line, you shoot it and we'll live with it. We'll live with it. Cause you, you work hard enough on it. And, you know, consequently this year he shot 133 of them as opposed to 40, 45, and he made them at a 37% clip. Um, it really opens up the court for our guys that can drive like Elijah, Elijah Stevens, our point guard, you know, I had the same vision for him. I sat him down and said, Hey man, you're an all league player. Um, we're going to do certain things. You're going to, we're going to let you boogie with the ball screens and create and everything. And, but I need you to, I need you as well. You got to shoot the ball from three. You know, he's a, he's a driver by nature, you know, in season in, in conference, he shot 37 and a half, 38% from three, which was up from 26, 27% from the year before. Um, so just really empowering those guys uh, in, in selling them the vision, and then also putting in the work um, that mimics every, all the shots that they would get uh, with, with, with our offense and everything. So, you know, I, I think we did a pretty good job with that. I think we can take a step now. You know, Matt's going to have to learn how to put the ball on the floor, in particular going left, so that he's more of a creator uh, off the bounce. Um, you know, I want him to score inside, outside. I want him driving. Um, Colin Smalls, you know, Colin is another guy. Um, you know, knock on wood, he's healthy uh, next year. 
And, you know, he's another guy. He's He's got to shoot the ball from three. I want him driving to, to the paint. I want him posting up more. He's a strong he's a strong body guard. Um, so just being able to evaluate all of those guys and, and knowing how I want to play. I want to have the court spaced. I want us to shoot threes in transition, but also want us getting to the free throw line. I want us getting shots at the rim. I mean, that's 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 what the game is based on that. It, it seemed like a lot of guys bought into the roles that you guys identified for them. Somebody like a Lincoln Ball is happy to be the dirty work guy and do yeah. those kinds of things. And, you know, he had a couple of big shots this year and stuff too, but you know, he was rebounds, outlets, run the break kind of stuff. And uh, I think players have to like trust a coaching staff and I'm sure today's, you know, transfer portal environment, it, it's tough to tell certain guys, Hey, we don't envision you as a 17 point per game scorer. So how do you kind of work through that with guys and Hey, trust us, this is the role that helps us be the best, you know, team, but also, you know, you be the best player as well. You know, it, it all starts first with uh, the relationships that you build off the court so that they they have a trust there. Um, and it's not just with them, it's with their parents as well. I mean, we've we spend quite a bit of time with our guys off the court, you know, whether it be, you know, doing lunch, sitting in the office, chopping it up, you know, watching film. Um, you know, those things are important so that that foundation of trust is built. And and obviously, you know, they, they see your resume. They know that you play at a certain level and everything else. But, you know, at the end of the day, you have to show them and, and, and sell them on, on, on how I can help you. Um, and, and so it, it took, you know, just sitting and watching a lot of film uh, of some of the places that I've been working with Kim English at George Mason, Dave Paulson at George Mason, you know, um, you know, some of the things I actually show film of, uh, of, of playing for Gary Williams, you know, some of the same sets that we ran for Joe Smith, we ran for Matt Rogers. I was just going to so, ask that question next, to be honest with you. I saw some flex stuff going on there and oh, yeah. post, post up in the middle of the lane, kind of right in the front of the basket yep. there. Yep. 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 That's, that stuff is, uh, I mean, Tennessee, you know, uh, Rick Barnes coach with Gary Williams, you, you'll see some of the same, same flex action, you know, that he runs for their guys. Uh, and, and then obviously we tweaked it with, um, you know, four out and five out stuff, you know, Coach English, I got a lot from and put a twist on it, you know, for our own personnel. Uh, but but being able to sit down and watch film with those guys and show them the vision mm -hmm. and then get on the court and actually work through the drills and everything. And you can start to see it, you know, in their eyes like, oh, OK, I, I get it. This makes sense. Right. So um, that's where a lot of it comes from, man. We just got to continue to do that and develop it. You mentioned playing with a guy like Joe Smith uh, and playing for Coach Williams. Sometimes I know I'm, I'm in my mid 30s. So even guys in their early 20s, sometimes they don't know a lot of the guys, even I know in my age group. So um, it's part of showing them some tape like, hey, there's some things that we're going to do that that maybe people like, I don't know, like flex is not as big a thing as it as you know, now as it was in the 90s and things like that, too. So it's part of just showing them the tape, just like, hey, this stuff works and guys did this and they got themselves to the league doing this. And like this can help yeah. you be the, the best kind of guy you want to be. Yeah, yeah. I got mad to buy him pretty quick when okay. obviously he didn't know Joe Smith and everything. But you watch film with him, you say, hey, this guy was a freshman of the year and first team all, you know, first team uh, all American as a freshman. And the next year he was player of the year and it was the number one overall pick. Like, yeah, it works. Exactly. <laughs> and you don't have to be an NBA lottery pick uh, to have it work, you know. So, but the thing is, you know, you have to adapt to um, our version of the flex isn't the exact same as, as Coach Williams. Um, you know, it, it may have a, a flex option that morphs into a four out or five out set, you know. Uh, so you got to kind of kind of marry the two of them. I think that's important. And, you know, us as coaches, those are the things that we have to do is is, is obviously adapt. Uh, but but some things, man, are just they're tried and true. They work. You know, the flex is a is a is a difficult thing to, to, to guard. And then knowing that in this day and age, having a five man like Matt that can set a set a ball screen and pop is also pretty important, too. There's going to be a lot of Maryland alums listening to this. So any uh, anything you've taken from Coach Williams, not from the X's and O's standpoint, but just how to run a team, how to build a culture, those sorts of things. And, and can you give us one good Coach Williams story? Man, just the sense of urgency in everything that you do. Um, day in, day out, um, you know, from off season workouts to pick up games. You know, I remember my freshman year, you know, I, I was I was a McDonald's All-American and 
came in and in my mind, I'm like, hey, I'm going to play 20 minutes a game and everything. And and quite honestly, in retrospect, I wasn't ready not to play those kind of minutes. You know, I played nine or 10 minutes a game. And the following year, going to my sophomore year, Coach Williams like, hey, man, like the ball is yours. Like you're, you're the starting point guard. You know, what you do with it is up to you. And I remember my very first um, – excuse me for a second. I got to plug in. I'm about to run out of juice here. No problem. But I remember my first – pickup game we always played in the uh after after his his camp that he had and we would play like at nine o'clock at night mm -hmm. and i remember walking in at like 8 55 right because the year before that's what i saw as a freshman i'm like hey you know we walk in five minutes before and we lace our shoes up we get going at 9 10 9 15 <laughs> and i remember that very first night i walked in at 8 55 or whatever and coach williams ripped me in front of everybody. I mean, guys that were in our program, there was some, at the time, Washington Bullets there that were going to play pickup with us, the campers that were able to go and sit around and watch us. I mean, he lit into me. But he was basically saying, like, hey, that was those are losing programs that we had in the past. Yeah. This is how we have a winning culture. You mm -hmm. get here 20, 25 minutes before, you have your shoes tied up, you stretch, at 9 o'clock we play, right? So – that's that's coach williams you know that that's you know he didn't have a super intricate stuff offensively the idea was that you were prepared you played hard you played together and and that's what i bring with me now like the two things that i ask our guys to do every single game play as hard as you possibly can and play together and and that's that's from coach williams you know that's what made him a hall of fame coach he always seemed to let his guys go especially guards and, and let them kind of do their thing a little bit and play freely and uh, you know, you guys look like you play a fun offensive brand of basketball. Is that intentional? Like, I got to think, you know, in keeping guys engaged and interested in wanting to play for a program, like it looking fun to play in seems like it would be a factor for these guys making their choices too. No, absolutely. You know, that's, that's how I wanted to play. You know, coach Williams would let you play up until the point. His thing yeah, was, yeah, sure. you know, we didn't, we didn't want to, walk down the court and run, run the flex. We called the two play, run the flex every over and over again. You know, he would call, he would put up two and sometimes I act like I didn't see him. I would just call motion. Cause I was just like, we could just play. And he would just, he would cuss me out and everything. But his thing was, if you guys get stops, you can, you can go play, you know, and, and, and sure enough, you know, the three of the four years that I played, you know, we went to the NCAA tournament and three of those four years, we were always a top 10 scoring team in the country. We scored over 80 points a game. So, you know, for me, I know what it was like as a player, you want to be able to play with pace and, and play with some freedom, structured freedom. Um, but I want to empower our guys. Hey, if you do what you're supposed to do on the defensive side of the basketball and you're keeping teams at 40, 42 percent field goal percentage, that means six out of 10 times we're in transition. Like that's the best time to try to attack an off attack a defense is when it's not set. And you want to get a guy to play hard on defense, uh, play hard on defense. You, you tell them you can get some freedom on offense, you know, and, and that's how I want to play. Um, I, I think that it, it, one, it's, it's, it's fun for our guys. And two, it helps a lot when I'm able to, when I'm out recruiting, let's say the next point guard and I can, I can show him Elijah Stevens and the freedom that he's allowed to play with. So it also helps with recruit with recruiting too, when you're able to just pop on the film and, and show that this is what we do. And this is why you fit in to, to, to our, our scheme and our system. We've talked about it a good amount here already, but maybe just to summarize for folks, for anyone who didn't come see an American game, one, they're missing out, but two, how would you describe your style of play and the way you want to play this upcoming season? Um, again, first seven seconds, you know, we, we, we preach that to our guys all the time. You know, we get a stop, we outlet the ball, two wings. If you don't have the ball, we want you sprinting, sprinting the lane. We want to be able to pitch the ball ahead for a layup for uh an open three you know I, I tell our guys and we practice it like i want you guys sprinting learn how to sprint as hard as you can catch it take two dribbles and shoot from three like our thing is if you your defender's feet are inside a three-point line you let the ball go um you know you, you minimize turnovers you take away tough shots um you know offensively we want free throws you want layups we want open threes it's as simple as that we only have three rules in transition run as hard as you can pass an open teammate shoot an open shot it's very simple um mm -hmm. now on the defensive side you know where we got to take the next step we've got to guard the ball much better and, and we will um 
I think once we are healthy, I think we're going to we're going to be a much better solid defensive team. And, um, you know, our, our, that's going to be kind of the, the fuel that, that, that fuels our Ferrari, so to speak. Right. The defense has got to be there so that now you can get in transition. But um, you come to an American game, you, you're going to see fast pace. You're going to see some intensity. You're going to see togetherness on the court at all times. I will definitely vouch for that. I didn't make it to as many games in person as I would have liked this year. I saw a couple of road games, but next year I'm going to fix that. Um, on the defensive side, it, it looks like you guys are are attempting to go no middle here. Is that sort of the key principle that, that you guys are putting in? It is. It is. And, and that's where, for our guys, what was so different, you know, um, we spent an inordinate amount of time even, I mean, until the last <laughs> last week of the season is, you know, it's – it's it's not as natural because you've probably been since six, seven, eight years old, however long you've been playing, you close out to a guy on the wing, you know, you just close out to him. You know, mm -hmm. for us, you have to close out on the top shoulder so that you can discourage a middle drive. And our help is coming from the baseline. Um, and that was the next step in, in in terms of our team development is having guys properly in place so that when that ball is driven, knowing that there's going to be somebody that's there. Um but it's a twofold thing and we got to get better at, you know, just because you are guarding the ball and you know that you have help if the ball is driven baseline, it doesn't mean that you give up baseline. And sure. I think too many times that's what we did. And then we put ourselves in rotations mm -hmm. and now you're scrambling. And, you know, in the Patriot League, we want a better. The Patriot League is one of the best three point shooting teams in the country, uh, the mm -hmm. leagues in the country. And, you know, you're not going to win a lot of ball games uh, and win championships if you don't defend the three point line well. And that's something that we didn't do in part because we weren't good on the ball. We relied on help at the baseline and now we're scrambling, you know, and, and if we can be much more solid on the ball, we're going to be much better. Uh, I felt with our personnel last year, we did not do some things ball screen wise that uh, that I, how I want to play. Um, mm -hmm. It was too passive. We were a lot, a lot of times we we're in a drop coverage. Uh, I want to be able to go out there and, and, and hit the ball and, and, and hedge it, trap it more. Um, it just just really impose our will on on the offense. And uh, and that's what we're going to address right now with uh, with the guys that we're recruiting right now is longer, more athletic, more agile bigs so that we can play the way that we want to play defensively in, in terms of ball screen. That's cool. That's really interesting. Um we mentioned coaches you've been around and uh, one of the coaches you played for is also one of the 50 greatest players of all time, probably. But uh, in the USBL, you played for Robert Parrish. Uh, can you talk a little <laughs> bit about that? And also just that team in general was like a loaded DMV squad. You had Lawrence Moten and Johnny Rhodes and, and yourself and a couple yeah. other guys. So just any any anecdote on that would be awesome. Man, you took me back on that. Chief, Chief was so cool, man. Like, you know, um, let you play. Uh, temperament was like he was – he was laid back but stern at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, though, though, that was that was those are some fun times, man. You know, you weren't getting paid a lot of money, but you were just going up and down the East Coast playing and everything. Um, but great experience with him, and then obviously to play with some of the guys you just mentioned. I mean, Lawrence Moat, man, um, one of the greatest scorers in Big East history. Uh, we competed against each other when he was at Carroll and I was at the Matha. Johnny Rhodes is saying, you know, one of my best friends. Um, was was a big time uh, villain of mine when he was at Dunbar and I was at at Dematha. Um, but to go out, man, and just play twenty four second shot clock, balls in your hands, and a lot of creativity was 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 really fun. That's cool. Uh, last couple ones for you, Coach. Kind of rapid fire. We'll get you out of here. Uh, what's one thing people might know not know about you off the court? You're willing to share with us? Any guilty pleasure TV show or uh, music hmm. or any of that kind of thing? Uh, shucks. Um... Man, I'm, uh, I'm I'm I love my uh, I love my golf. Okay. Um, don't get a chance to play it nearly as much as I want to. Um, you know, a perfect night for me, man, is is out on my deck out back with a cigar and a, and a nice bourbon and, nice. and some music. Uh, I can I can cut up film and watch film until one or two in the morning doing that when it's nice outside. So uh, love doing that. Um, TV show, man, um, shucks. I'm a big time, um, you know, gangster flick type thing. Okay. Uh, obviously, all the Godfathers, with, with the exception of number three, don't watch that. It doesn't even count, right? You got to leave. Yeah, that off the yeah. List. Uh, Peaky Blinders is one of yeah. my one of my favorite shows. Obviously, The Wire, uh, shows like that, man. But a lot of times, I'm in bed, you know, cutting up film. My wife, she's got on Real Housewives of Potomac or something. I got to watch that stuff with her from time to time. 
That sounds very familiar to our house. I'm not cutting up film for a job, but watching uh, somebody's game, WCC game, uh, you know, somebody uh, late West Coast and there's some yeah. uh, Real Housewives going over here. Uh, where do you see the program in five years? Where would you guys like to get this to? I want to be, uh, and I'm not ashamed to say it, I want to be where Colgate is. I mean, for you know Matt Lango and what he's done with that program, man, is, is, is unreal. Um, you know, Hamilton, New York, you know, it's not a happening place like Washington, D.C., you know, but um, to win five of the last six uh, Patriot League championships and uh, to do it in dominant fashion, um, you know, he's established a culture. He is where we want to be, where every time you step on the court, there's an expectation uh, that 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 you're going to win the basketball game. You're going to play the right way. You're going to play hard. You're going to play together. Um, you know, we were fortunate enough to go up there and beat them on on their their home court and I think they had the second longest win streak in the country at the time and they'd only lost one game and in, in the month of february in like four or five years so to do that and do it shorthanded you know it shows that we have the capability of doing it now we've got to be able to do it consistently um so for us man in five years i want you to be able to say man these guys are they won the patriot league four straight years and they're yeah. you know the, the championship always runs through through america i thought you guys were close this year uh, honestly like there were a handful of games where I just like I said, one or two possessions, and and this is maybe a slightly different, uh, you know, postseason run we're talking about here. Yeah, man. So many people are like, oh man, Greg, you know, Dwayne, you guys had a great year, man. Great job, first year, and 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 I'm gracious enough, to try to be humble enough, and say, hey, man, I appreciate it and everything, but it's still, you know, deep in my spirit, I'm like, man, if if Jeff Sprouse doesn't go down, if if Colin Smalls doesn't miss nine games, if Jermaine Jermaine Balasanga Webb, you know, a backup big doesn't doesn't miss 18 games or whatever it was. Like we'd be talking about something a little bit different, you know, so. uh, as opposed to being 10 and 8 in league. Maybe we're 14 and, you know, 14 and 4 or whatever the case may be. But for me, as a, you know, people ask, what did you learn most your first year? I think that within itself, you know, no coach wants to be, uh, you know, overwhelmed with injuries during the season and I got a crash course this year in, in how to manage that um you know practices were not this, with the same tenth intensity and length yeah, that I'm, assistant I'm coaches to. jumping in some too right you yeah know. Jackie Manuel man uh my, my, my guy he jumped in and practiced a number of days Ike Tate had to go out there almost every day and practice but it was a learning course it, it was a crash course for me and just in terms of how to manage that day in day out um i got to give a shout out to mike bray you know i called mike once i knew we had all these injuries at the same time i'm looking at my my, my practice sheet and i'm like there's a lot of red here a lot of red here that these guys are out today so i called him up and say hey you know because i know traditionally mike when he was at notre dame i mean he he played two guys on his bench maybe mm -hmm. and and i asked him I said, Man, coach like how did you do this day in day out what does practice look like and you know, he said, hey, man, a lot of 5 on 0 <laughs> game yeah. speed, a lot of game speed shots and drills, some competitive 5 on 5 if you can do it. But keep those guys healthy and, and, and keep them somewhat conditioned. And uh, and we try to do that. Um, but it's uh, and I give our credit to our walk ons. We had three or four walk ons, man, that, that played for us this year. And mm -hmm. sometimes they were all on the court together and not ideal, but they sure. gave us what they gave us, man. And um, so moving forward, try to keep these guys as healthy as possible so that we can we can be good. Hopefully not something you have to worry about as much next year. Uh, I, but, would. I hope yeah. so. I pray so for those guys sake too. Yeah. Uh, so the, the whole point of this podcast is to tell, you know, good DMV stories and talk about local basketball. And as much as anybody, you kind of embody that you played here in the area from the area, you, you know, like you're coaching in the area. So as somebody who's seen all these DMV guys got across a couple of different areas here, but also played and coached all over the country, just how good is this area for basketball? And, any one particular story stands out that kind of highlights the the basketball in this area and how good it is? Um, I mean, one story, I wouldn't say one story, but you just look at all the all the players that have come from this area. And I'm I'm not talking about like guys who ended up playing professional in the NBA and everything. I'm, I mean, we got so many players at all levels that have an impact, whether they go into the Patriot League their first or second year you know, the ACC, the Big Ten, the Big South, the Southern Conference. I mean, our area is loaded with players that have an impact wherever they go. Um, I tell people all the time, you have no idea how good you have it here. Um, when I was working at UNC Greensboro, I mean, it would be so frustrating to go sometimes to a game and 
you know, um, Wes Miller, who was our head coach at the time, who's at Cincinnati, was a good friend of mine. He would like, hey, you know, simply, you know, let's go see such and such kid in, you know, Asheville or wherever. Well, one, you go there and, you know, the game is supposed to start at seven, but I didn't realize it. But the JV team, boys team is going to play first. And then the girls team is going to play. And then the girls team, the varsity team is going to play. And then the varsity. So the game starts at 830, 9 o'clock. So that's, that, that pisses you off. It's a long day. And then when the game starts – there's no shot clock and that kid that you were going to play, he's playing at the bottom of a two, three zone, <laughs> you know, and it's not to discredit North Carolina. North Carolina has a lot of players too. I just think here in the DC area, it's really concentrated. It's, it's, you can't hide, you know, you got a shot clock. You are really going to mimic what it's going to be like at the next level. And, and, and kids compete, man, kids compete. You know, my youngest son who is uh, Elijah, who's a freshman at Bishop Ireton, you know, he's like a lot of the kids that are in this area who later on become good because he's not the absolute best kid. He's not going to be the kid who's, you know, making team take over or DC premiere or whatever. But like he's aspiring to be one of those guys. So every day he's like fighting and clawing, fighting and clawing. And he doesn't know it, but like iron sharpens iron. He's going to be prepared so that now when he does become a senior and he goes wherever he goes, He's going to be so much more well prepared from an X's and O's standpoint, but more importantly, from a competitive edge standpoint, because he sees it every single day. He's fighting and clawing to be, you know, that top guy who's, you know, top 25 in the ninth, in the ninth grade or whatever the case may be. Um, you know, that's what makes this place so special. There's always somebody better and there's no nights off. The last team in a local league here is as good as the third best team in a lot of other leagues in the country, I think. Oh, so, man, right? that, that's the way it is. And that's what makes it so special. I so I just told somebody this story a couple of days ago. You know, Mucci Norris, who came out, uh, we, were, we were the same year. I mean, Mucci went to Cardoza. And I remember playing against Mucci like in uh, – in the urban coalition or at, at doc's gym where like it was, it was invite only. And me and him were one of three or four high school guys. We're playing against guys who are playing overseas and college guys. And they would make us play one-on-one -on -one full court at the end of this three hour day that we would have on a Sunday morning. And man, Moochie was a handful, long arms, lefty, wicked crossover, left to right. And here I am. I'm a McDonald's All-American. Moochie has to go to junior college, but I always knew in the back of my mind, Moochie is as good as I am, if not better. Mm -hmm. He does some things that I can't do. And sure enough, you know, yeah, I have a very good career at University of Maryland and I go overseas and everything, but like he has a real dude, pro career. Like he, he has a pro career okay, in the yeah, NBA. He was, he was a handful. You know, you know? There's so many guys in our area like that, man, that, you know, it's all about timing. It's all about some luck and everything, being at the right place at the right time. But you can go on and on and on for generations, man, of, of play at those, those type of situations with players in the DMV. That's awesome. I think – thank you for providing that perspective because I, I think, uh, again, of anybody, you can talk to that uh, as well as anyone. So that was awesome. Uh, yeah. Coach, I, I think there's going to be a lot of guys uh, coming through this American program that we can talk about and tell DMV stories about over the next couple of years. So looking forward to seeing more of it and talking about you guys and – I hope this time next year we can do the same podcast, but we're talking about the great postseason run you guys had and how everybody was healthy and uh, you got, you know, got where you wanted to be. I appreciate that, man. I appreciate all of your support, man. And uh, many of your followers, um, you know, again, this, this, this area holds a special place in my heart, man. And, you know, I want to do uh, all that I can one for American university, uh, but also for the DMV. Uh, we've got many great programs and coaches from, Ed Cooley at Georgetown, to Tony Skin at George Mason, Chris Caputo at, at, at GW. I mean, you go on and on and on, man. So for all of us to collectively do well, um, you know, it, it's going to make it so much more fun for the DMV, all the, all the basketball heads in this area. And I appreciate that you played a, a good amount of those teams already, playing Howard and playing George, uh, Georgetown. Like, it's it's just cool to see those local teams get together. So hopefully that's something we can see more of here. Yeah, we're going to try to do it, man. We, we're going to try to play those guys every single year. Very yeah, cool. Coach, thank you again uh, for everybody. Please rate, review, subscribe. Make sure to follow the American basketball team uh, next season. We're looking forward to big things. And we're presented by betonline.ag. And we will catch you all next time.